Hello, my name is Yen Jensen. Uh, that's me here. Uh, today I want to tell you uh, about this study that uh, we did, that I did together with Anna Christensen, who did actually did most of the work, and Stefan Sauer here at the University of Copenhagen. And it's about uh, ring current effects in uh, on amide proton uh, chemical shifts. And this appeared recently in 2011 uh, in the journal of Chemical Theory and Computation. And so if you just Google the title, a part of the title, you'll find it online. <clears throat> okay, so what is this? Um, what is this paper about? First, some background. Um, there's a, a lot of programs out there. Uh, some of these are, are listed here that can take a protein structure and predict uh, the chemical shifts. And there are many uses for that. Uh, the one we're most interested in is is illustrated here in this very nice paper by uh, Jorge Villa and uh, Harold Chiraga in Accounts of Chemical Research. Uh, and what is especially nice about this paper is this figure here. Um, one way to use chemical shifts is to uh, validate protein structures or essentially fold protein structures. So for example, you've measured uh, the chemical shifts, in this case the carbon alpha chemical shifts here. You measure those experimentally and now you want to know whether um, these chemical shifts correspond to the red structure or the green structure. And so one way to do that is to uh, calculate the chemical shifts using this structure and this structure and compare it to the observed chemical shifts. Right? And so what you can see here in the figure is you have much better correlation between computed and observed chemical shifts for the green structure and not so much for the red structure because you have some outliers here. Right? And so this is a way of, of saying what structure the protein has in solution uh, where you measure the chemical shifts. So that's why these programs are important. Okay, so uh, one contribution to chemical shifts in proteins is what's called the ring current effects. And so that is uh, a, a change in chemical shift uh, due to the aromatic groups close by. So for example here we have an amide proton which you have in the backbone of a protein. Uh, and this is very close uh, to this uh, phenyl ring. That could be a phenylalanine, for example. And so that will affect the chemical shift here. And so in order to figure out how the chemical shift is affected, we're going to do computations uh, on a large variety of structures like this uh, to, uh, to get the, st the structural dependence of the chemical shift ring current effects on this. And so the way we do that is we construct models like this. Um, <clears throat> and then to get at the ring current effect, here is uh, an example for histidine. Right? We, we break the aromaticity. So in the, in the case of histidine, this is protonated histidines, we add two uh, protons here to break the double bond uh, and thereby remove the aromaticity. And so the difference in chemical shift of this amide proton in this structure here and in this structure here is a chemical shift, a ring current effect on the chemical shift. Okay, so that's essentially what we're doing. Now, the first thing we have to uh, address is what level of theory are we going to do this at? So here we have ring current uh, effects calculated for the four structures I showed you before. Right? So you have a, a range of ring current effects from about 0.7 all the way to about 0.1 or 0.2. And we've calculated this with different levels of theory. Uh, and as you can see, the ring current effects here are fairly insensitive to what level of theory you use. Okay, So you get basically the same number for by when using all kinds of different uh, structures. And so out of all this, we, we picked this uh, level of theory here as representative as probably the best. And that is because we chose that because uh, of, of this column here. So this column is the chemical shielding value just of formamid, so without uh, the benzene ring or the histidine, histidine ring there. And that system is small enough that we can do a couple cluster complete, complete basis set extrapolation. So we have that value here. That's probably a set. the best you're going to do uh, today. Right? And as you can see, this value here is very close uh, to this value here, which we get with MP2. Right? And MP2, we could actually afford. This level of theory, we cannot afford when the benzene rings are there, or the histidine rings. But we can afford it at this level of theory. Right? 
uh, this level of theory is pretty expensive uh, to do a lot of calculations with, and so what we'd actually like to use is this level of theory. And as you can see, these values here uh, are very close to these values here. Okay, and so they're off by seven percent. And so what we do in the subsequent calculations is to scale uh, ring current effects obtained at this level of theory by 1.074. Okay, so the overall conclusion from this table is that. Uh, the ring current effects that we predict using this level of theory uh, are, are good, certainly good to within 0.1 ppm. Okay, so the next thing then is to do a lot of these calculations. So we extract a lot of uh, amid group uh, aromatic side chain geometries. So here's an example for, uh, from benzene. So we take a lot of different protein structures, extract a lot of uh, models and then we do the chemical shift uh, calculations with the level of theory I told you before and the scaling. Uh, and then we, this is in the case of benzene, we have also done all the other aromatic side chains for a total of over 900 structures. Uh, then we take these values and we, we fit them to simpler uh, models that connect the structure to the ring current effect here. And as you can see you get, you really get excellent fits. So we believe these values here, certainly to within 1 ppm and probably better. And as you can see, these can be represented excellently by very simple uh, models. Here's the point dipole model. Okay, so we did that for uh, all the aromatic side chains. Um, and as you can see here, we're then able to extract parameters uh, for three different simplified models of ring current effects. One is the point dipole, one is the Hake Malian model, and one is the Johnson Bowie model. So for example, this Hake Malian model is used in all these uh, or in many of the programs that predict chemical shift from proteins here. Uh, so we're able to get the new parameters uh, that, that enter these simple models. And as you can see here, then this is the RMSD and this is the mean absolute deviation. Uh, of chemical shifts um, calculated with shift x for example which use these parameters and these are the parameters we think they should use uh, based on our new benchmark study and as you can see there are some differences uh, especially in histidine uh, there are some errors of about up to 0.3 uh, ppm so if the authors of this program wanted to imp improve that part uh, of the model uh, then, for example, for the Hagmalian model, they should use uh, these values here. As you can see, we get very good RMSDs and very good mean absolute deviations. On the other hand, 0.3, uh, errors of 0.3 are not, are not huge. And so another way to interpret this result is that in, in the, the models used in these uh, programs are, are probably OK. That's not where the main part of the error comes from. This was amide protons. You can, of course, there are other protons. Uh, any proton in the, in the molecule, in the protein molecule, will have these effects. So we have to, of course, now to look at other nuclei as well. And so we did a small uh, sort of study uh, where we looked at uh, CH protons instead of NH protons, using without reparameterization, just simply seeing how well these uh, empirical models that we reparameterized, how well they could predict ab initio models computed at the same level. Okay, I'm back from the phone call. Uh, as you can see, um, we get using these old, uh, the models parameterized for amide protons, uh, they transfer reasonably well. Uh, to CH protons. But of course, we're going to go back and, and do some uh, more calculations to fine tune this. Okay, so that's it. Um, this work was would not be possible without the support of, of uh, Novo Nordisk, uh, and it would also not be possible without the computers we got from the uh, we have at the Danish Center for Supercomputing. Uh, and so I want to thank them, and I want to thank you for your attention.